The first question is, uh, is a trial a test and tribulation troubles? I guess what I'm asking is, what is the difference between a trial and a tribulation? All right, so um, they go hand in hand. Um, trials and tribulations go hand in hand. Trial is a test. Hey, um, IT, I sent the definition. I saw this earlier, so let's just read the definition, then we we'll go to the scriptures. All right, read that. Miriam Webster, trial, the former examination before contempt tribunal of the matter in issue in a civil ma in a civil or criminal cause in order to determine such issue. Read on. The action or process of trying or putting to proof. Test. Test, right. So the trial, I'm sorry, the action or process of trying or putting to the proof. All right, first scripture that comes to my mind would be Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. All right? So we'll start right there. Give me the book of Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 2. All right? So when it comes to trials and tribulations, they, they work hand in hand. And I said, yeah, I think I sent the other definition as well. But read the scripture first, please. The book of Deuteronomy, chapter 8 and verse 2. Come on. And thou shalt remember all the way, excuse me, and thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee these 40 years in the wilderness. Come on. To humble thee and to prove thee, to know what was in thine heart and whether thou wouldest keep his commandments or no. Right. That's the test right there. That is the test. All right, so, so throughout our time period, our time frame, our, our lifespan, we're going to get different tests according to whether or not we're going to keep the commandments. Now, those tribulations, like I said, they go hand in hand with the trials. The trials is the test, and the tribulations are the things that we go through. All right, you got that definition, IT? Okay, read that. Merriam-Webster, tribulation, distress or suffering resulting from oppression or persecution. Right. It says distress or suffering resulting from oppression or persecution. All right. Or persecution. Give me Deuteronomy 4 real quick. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 4 and verse 27. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations, and ye shall be left few in number. You could take the definition down now. Read it again. Verse 27. And the Lord shall scatter you among the nations. Come on. And ye shall be left few in number mm -hmm. among the heathen, whether the Lord shall lead you. Right. When did that happen to us? That happened to us was 16, wait, 1492, 1619. All right. Read on. Verse uh, jump to verse 30. Verse 30. When thou art in tribulation, and all these things are come upon thee. Right. All these things have come upon thee. What things? The things written of and uh, Deuteronomy 28. Uh, Leviticus, the, um, what was that? Leviticus 20, what is it? 26. Yeah, 26. Thank you. Leviticus 26 chapter. Read on. When thou art in tribulation and all these things are come upon thee, even in the latter days, if thou turn to the Lord thy God, thou and shall be obedient unto his voice. And for the Lord thy God is a merciful God. Right, right, right. So it goes back to what? Deuteronomy 8 and 2. We are tested on whether or not we're going to keep the commandments. Now, is it going to be easy? No. Uh, go to Deuteronomy 11 and 21. Why? Why is it not going to be easy? All right. Do me a favor. Let's go to, I'm just, you know, going off the top. Let's go to the book of Genesis first. Sorry. Let's go to the book of Genesis chapter 3, and I want verse, <clears throat> now nah, I ain't going to go too deep. Just give me verse 24. Genesis chapter 3 and verse 24. Come on. So he drove out the man, and he placed at the east of the garden of Eden cherubims and a flaming sword which turned every way to keep the way of the tree of life. Right. Read verse 23 as well. Verse 23. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the Garden of Eden. It's from the Garden of Eden. This right here, this was the kingdom right here. Okay. The reason why we got kicked out of the kingdom 
is because of sin. Now let's go to Genesis 6. Let's go to Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Genesis chapter 6 and verse 5. Come on. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, mm -hmm. and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Right, was only evil continually. All right, uh, give me Genesis 8 and 21. Genesis chapter 8 and verse 21. Come on. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor, and the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for a man's sake. Come on. For the imaginations of man's heart is evil from his youth. Mm -hmm. Neither will I again smite any more everything living as, as I have done. Right, because he destroyed, the, he destroyed the earth before because of sin. So he said he's not going to do that no more. All right, so what did he do? He decided to choose a people. When you read Genesis, the 17th chapter, the covenant went with Isaac on down to... A, um, on down to Jacob, which his name was changed to Israel, and from him came the 12 tribes of Israel. Now, give me the book of um, Deuteronomy 11 and 21. Watch this. Deuteronomy chapter 11 and verse 21. Come on. That your days may be multiplied, and the days of your children in the land which the Lord swear unto your fathers to give them, uh -huh. as the days of heaven upon earth. As the days of heaven upon earth. All right, so what was we supposed to do? We were supposed to what? Exemplify righteousness to all the other nations, all right? Because the Most High God destroyed the earth the first time because of wickedness. So he chose a people, and he gave us laws, statutes, commandments to do what? To be an example to the other nations. Did we do that? Absolutely not. And because of that, now we're going through various trials and tribulations trying to make it back to the kingdom, okay? So from there, give me um, Revelations 2 and 9. All right, watch this. Give me Revelations 2 and 9 real quick. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty. Why does God know our works, our tribulation, and poverty? Why does he know that? Because the reason, give me um, Ezekiel 39 and 23. This goes with Deuteronomy 4 and 30 as well. Okay, why does God know our tribulation and our poverty? Why is that? Read what you got. The book of Ezekiel chapter 39 and verse 23. Come on. And the heathen shall know that the house of Israel went into captivity for their iniquity. Right, because he put us in a situation. He gave us to the hand of our enemies because we committed sin. So that's why we're going through these trials. Why? To see if we're going to keep the commandments or not. Because remember, Adam was given the kingdom. Did he keep the commandments? No, Adam did not. He transgressed. All right, goes into detail when you read uh, Second Ezra, the third chapter. Okay, he transgressed. When we got the kingdom in uh, Israel, did we keep the commandments? No, we transgressed. So now we have to go through these trials, the test, okay? And in those tests, you're going to have various tribulations. All right, read what you got again, Revelations 2, 9. The book of Revelation, chapter 2 and verse 9. Come on. I know thy works and tribulation and poverty, but thou art rich. But God says at the end of the day, we are rich because if we... If we uh, jump down to uh, verse 25. Verse 25. But that which ye have already, hold fast till I come. Come on. And he that overcometh and keepeth my works unto the end, uh -huh. to him will I give power over the nations. Right. That's why we're rich. Because the, uh, the covenants, the promises belong to us. All right. So he says, if we pass these trials, if we endure through these tribulations, he's saying we'll inherit the kingdom and have dominion over the nations. All right, give me Acts 14 and 22. All right, Acts 14 and 22. Then we'll, uh, you know, continue to expound on these trials as well. Read what you got. The book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22. Come on. Confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Right, right, right. Confirming the souls of the disciples. So you got to realize what was Paul uh, talking about right here when he says confirming the souls. Um, jump up to verse, mm, jump up to verse 20. Acts chapter 14 and verse 20. How be it, 
as a disciple stood round about him. He rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and to Antioch. Oh, I'm sorry. Start at 19. I'm sorry. The book of Acts 14, verse 19. Come on. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium. Come on. Who persuaded the people, having and stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Right. So Paul, he got stoned to the point where he lost consciousness, right? So he's laying like it appears to be dead. They picked him up, his lifeless body, out of the city. Read on. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derby. Read. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch. Right. So Paul just got stoned to the point we lost consciousness. But as soon as he rose up, he got right back to doing the work. He didn't make any excuse. Right. Read on. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Right. Confirming the souls of the disciples. Meaning what? This is what it's going to take to inherit eternal life. This is what you got to do to make the kingdom. All right. As long as you got breath in your body, you still got to do the work. There's no excuse. Read on. Confirming the souls of the disciples mm -hmm. and exhorting them to continue in the faith. Come on. And that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. Right. Because remember, remember that um, when you go to Acts um well no give me uh yeah i think acts 9 is the one i want give me a second acts 9 and 16 i'm sorry about that so watch this all right so when it comes to the trials and tests right so paul he had to be stoned he had to go through that thing right there now in retrospect paul was already shown that all right he was already shown that he would have to go through that give me acts 9 and 16 now, the test came in when the tribulation actually took place, when the suffering actually took place. He had to actually go through it, go through with it. Watch this. Acts chapter 9 and verse 16. Come on. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Right. So when this was when he was on the road to Damascus, this is when he regained his uh, was regaining his sight. All right. So the Osai, Jesus Christ, through Jesus Christ, showed Paul. What he had to go through, meaning what he showed him all the way up to the point where he's about to get beheaded in Rome. So he saw all of that, but he still went through it. The most High was proving him. OK, read that again. Verse 16. For I will show him how great things he must suffer for my name's sake. Excellent. Excellent. That's to call it the tribulation right there. OK. All right. So go back to Acts 14 and 22. The book of Acts, chapter 14 and verse 22, uh -huh. confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. So you got to understand how Paul's really saying that. He's literally saying that because I already know that I'm going to be in shipwrecks. I already know that I'm going to die for the, for the ministry. He knew that. So he's exhorting them, whoever's going to roll with me. Hey, guess what? You're going to be going through the same exact thing. All of us are going to go through the same exact thing, okay? From there, go to Psalms 34 and 19. All right, Psalms 34 and 19. Now, it's different levels and different degrees. Everybody not the same, right? All right, so understand that. Everybody's trial ain't going to be the same, all right? Uh, read what you got. The book of Psalms, chapter 34 and verse 19. Uh-huh. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. Read it again. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. The scripture says many afflictions that we're going to have to go through. It didn't just say one or two. No, it's going to be constant. And understand that. They come, they're seasonal too. All right, you may have gotten over one thing, but it's going to come back again. Read that again. Verse 19. Uh-huh. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivereth him out of them all. Right. Give me that in uh, 1 Corinthians 10 when he say he maketh it, make it the way to escape. 1 Corinthians chapter 10 and verse 13. Come, okay, he's right. Thank you. There hath no temptation taken you, but such as is common to man. Uh -huh. But God is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, mm -hmm. but will, will with the temptation also make a way to escape. That ye may be able to bear it. Right, right, right. So remember that temptation. Give me James 1 and 12 real quick. 
All right, with that temptation, this also goes hand in hand with your, uh, what you call it, with your tribulations, all right? There's different types of tribulations. So if you're someone who deals with pride, all right, your tribulation is going to be different than someone who deals with gluttony. You understand? So you're going to be put in different situations. Like I also stated, there's some spirits that are stronger and there's some spirits that are weaker. All right, so someone who is stronger, yeah, expect that brother or that sister to face stronger tribulation, okay? What I call this now? Uh, James 1 and 12. Yeah, read that. The book of James, chapter 1 and verse 12. Uh -huh. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Uh-huh, because remember, the trial is based on what? Whether or not we'll keep God's commandments, yes or no. All right, so we're not, all of us ain't tempted to do everything. Well, if you, well, I can't say that. Majority of us have hangups. Majority of us have different sins or whatever it may be that we're tempted by. All right, so normally it's not everything. All right, so when it comes to stealing, someone may not have an issue with stealing or anything like that with covetousness. But when it comes to lust, sexual lust, they may have an issue. All right, read the verse again. Watch verse this. 12. Blessed is the man that endureth temptation. Right. Your temptation based off of the thing in the law that you have a hard time keeping or overcoming consistently. Read. For when he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. It says when he is tried, that tried is going to what? A trial. Okay. Come on. When he is tried, he shall receive the crown of life. He shall receive the crown of life if he overcomes his temptation read on which the lord hath promised to them that love him right now drop that give me um give me uh, the book of matthew 24 real quick no save that give me hebrews 11 because i talked about different um different levels right give me hebrews 11 real quick and read verse Nah, give me verse um, 36. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 36. Go into, you know, those like Paul and those are the stronger spirits. Read this. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourges. Uh-huh. Cruel mockings, you know, um, being embarrassed, open uh, public spectacle, open spectacle, things of that nature. Read on. And scourgings. Yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. Of bonds and imprisonment. Some of us ain't strong enough to be thrown in prison, but some are. Okay? Uh, read on. They were stoned. They were stoned like Paul was stoned, like we read in um, Acts 14. Come on. They were sawn asunder. Sawn asunder. Understanding that is another type of trial. Sawn asunder isn't um, somebody punching you. Understand that sawn asunder is exactly what it means sawed asunder split down the middle and when that happens you die okay so understand there are certain type of tribulations based on certain spirits okay from there give me the one in revelations the second chapter and we'll go back to this all right revelation chapter one no 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 revelations chapter two and verse 10. Revelation chapter 2 and verse 10. Come on. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Right. So God is telling us the things that we suffer, those are tribulations. All right. So he says, fear none of those things which we're going to suffer. Okay. They're going to happen regardless. But he's telling us don't fear them because there's a greater purpose behind it. Because I'm literally giving you the test. You just have to pass it. That's it. Read. Fear none of those things which thou shalt suffer. Come on. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison. He's telling you who's going to do it, okay? Remember in verse 9, it says, uh, and I know the blasphemy of them which say they are Jews. He's telling you who the devil is on the earth. All right, read on. The devil shall cast some of you into prison. Come on. That ye may be tried. That ye may be tried. The trials, that you may be tried. That may be that brother's trial or that sister's trial. Read. And ye shall have tribulation ten days. Come on. Be thou faithful unto death. Do what? Be thou faithful unto death. And some will be sawn asunder, right? So some will may, may be thrown in prison. 
Some may be sawn asunder. So a tribulation, it differs. Okay, some you have minimal. A lot of us aren't ready for this level yet, but we have to get ready because right on the corner. You know, a lot of us, we go crazy if we lose our job. That's little. That's little. Okay, that's like minute. Because give me the one in Wisdom of Solomon 3. Bishop just sprung this out this past Sabbath. Give me Wisdom of Solomon 3 and give me um, verse 4. No, ver yeah, uh, verse 4 and 5. Wisdom of Solomon chapter 3 and verse 4. Come on. For though they be punished in the sight of men, yet is their hope full of immortality. Read. And having been a little chastised. Right. So now read verse 2. Verse 2. In the sight of the unwise, they seem to die. Right. He's saying that death, that when we die, that's a little chastisement. That's what he's saying right there. So if we lose our job, what is that? Right. You know, if 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 we got odds with somebody, what is that? We what God is revealing to us in these last days is like what is bitter when you got a difference or whatever it is, we gotta get over that, right? We have to get over that because there's, there's more things coming. And even with that, God is saying that's little. So in our minds, when we can't really understand death, you know, in that magnitude, and, and guess what? All of us need to be striving to get there. Everybody's not there yet. We understand that. But the scriptures are showing us, hey, when you see these occurrences happening on the earth in these last days, the wars, the rumors of wars, the famines, the, um, the civil unrest, you understand? Insurrections. You're, we see this every day. It ain't like once a month. Bro, we see this every day. Scripture's telling us, it's like, hold on, wait a second. All right, all right, all right, all right. Me, you know, getting emotional or whatever, I got to put that to the side. I, I, I got I to gotta focus and pre prepare my spirit for what's to come, right? All right, where we, where we at? Drop that. Let's go back to, um, I think we could drop all of those. So now... Give me 1 Peter 4, 12. Okay. 1 <clears throat> Peter chapter 4 and verse 12. Come on. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you. Right. Don't think it's strange. Why? Because what did we do? Why do you think I read Genesis and Deuteronomy? Don't think it's strange. And then Ezekiel 39. Because we brung it on ourselves, right? But he's telling us, if you want to get back to Eden, you want to get back to the kingdom of Jerusalem, all right, this is how you got to do it this time. I'm not just going to give it to you like I gave it to you, your forefathers before you. You got to earn this thing. Okay? Read that verse again. Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, uh -huh. as though some strange thing happened unto you. Right. It's not a strange thing. If you, if you want to serve Christ, prepare yourself for temptation. If you want to in, in, uh, make it to the kingdom of heaven, you must go through much tribulation. All right. So you shouldn't think it is a strange thing. All right. Now I want to in this and then I'll go to the next question. Give me Matthew 24. All right. Matthew 24. And like I discussed, there's different levels of tribulation, but we got to level up and realize which which uh, which level of tribulation that we're currently in. OK, give me that Matthew 24 and 21. Matthew chapter 24 and verse 21. Come on. For then shall be great tribulation. Right, right, right. Read that again. For then shall be great tribulation. Remember, he put a distinction. He didn't just say for then there should be tribulation. He said for then there should be great tribulation. Great tribulation. Read. Such as was not since the beginning of the world. Right, right, right. Such that it was not such as the beginning of the world. All right. Showing you what it's going to be a time where the evilness is going to be at an all time high. OK, give me that one in Jeremiah 30. This is the great tribulation you're talking about right here. You know what I want? Jeremiah 30 and six. Jeremiah chapter 30 and verse six. Come on. Ask ye now and see whether a man does travail with child. Wherefore, do I see every man with his hands on his loins as a woman and travail? And all faces are turned into paleness. Right. That's just going into uh, fear. All right. That's just going into uh, very, uh, what's it called? Perilous times. Read on. Verse 7. Alas, 
for that day is great. That day is what? Is great. Remember, he said the what? The great tribulation. The great tribulation. Read. So that none is like it. Nothing is like it since the beginning of the world. Come on. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what we're living in right now. We're living in Jacob's trouble. Okay. So you got to understand, you know, our mindsets and where we need to get to quicker than normal. Right. We're further along in this thing than we could ever imagine. But now we have to learn to put emotions to the side and make sure that our thoughts are filtered through these scriptures. Okay. Um, f did you finish that out? I'm sorry. Uh, just a little bit of it. Yeah, go ahead. Alas, for that day is great so that none is like it. It is even the time of Jacob's trouble. Uh -huh. But he shall be saved out of it. Right, if we pass the test, right? And being saved out of it, does that mean that you will not see death? No. It's not what it means. It means that if you endure until the end and overcome you will. That's that's what he's saying right there. A lot of times, oh, I'm be saved out of it. Nah, you got to understand. It doesn't mean that you'll have your carnal life. OK, give me First uh, Corinthians 15 real quick. OK. First Corinthians 15. Hey, man, I wish I could uh, play a clip on a movie called The Last Samurai. Well, when it comes to the samurais, the most honorable thing was to die in battle. <laughs> You get what I'm saying? The most honorable thing was to actually go out on the battlefield and die. Well, this is a spiritual battlefield, okay? Um, remember how Paul and the apostles rolled. They, they rejoiced when they got to suffer such afflictions for the name of Christ, right? So our minds have to be different, all right? We got we to gotta change the way we look at this thing because... Our lot, give me, before you read 1 Corinthians 15, could you give me um, Philippians 3 and 7 real quick? Philippians chapter 3 and verse 7. Come on. But what things were gained to me, those I counted loss for Christ. Right. So anything we gain in this lifetime for Christ, we should be willing to give it up. Right? There's nothing here that should be keeping us to the point where I just have to be. Nah. We should be seeking heavenly things. Read on. Yea, doubtless, and I count all things but loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Christ Jesus, my Lord. Right. We should count everything. What do you say? Count everything loss for Christ. Read. For whom I have suffered the loss of all things. Come on. And do count them but dung. Right. Count them but dung. So what is this life? What is this life? Now give me 1 Corinthians 15. And I want verse, uh, 36. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 36. Actually start at verse 33. The book of 1 Corinthians chapter 15 and verse 33. Come on. Be not deceived. Evil communications corrupt good manners. Read. Awake to righteousness. And sin not, uh -huh. for some have not, not the knowledge of God. I speak this to your shame. Right. Some did not have the knowledge of God. They didn't want to follow and keep the commandments. They didn't want to follow the righteous example. Come on. But some man will say, how are the dead raised up? Mm -hmm. And with what body do they come? So they ask, they're being carnal. They're not understanding what Paul's saying. They're not being spiritual. They're asking, okay, how in the world can the dead be raised up. So Paul's about to tell him right here. Come on. Thou fool, that which thou sowest is not quickeneth, except it die. Right. So for example, for example, we out here doing the work. We laboring. So in order to get our reward, guess what? In order to change, in order to receive that reward, we got this is have this has to die. This has to die. You understand? So as, as long as we want to stay here, we are distancing ourselves from our reward in Christ. Okay? We shouldn't be, you know, praying for this to prolong. No, 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 no. Give me the one in Matthew 24. Okay? Give me Matthew 24. Now, please don't misunderstand what we're saying. We're not saying we should pray for death. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. Watch this. Matthew 24. And uh, I think it's 22. Just let me look at it. Yes, come on. 
Matthew 24 and verse 22. Read. And except those days shall be shortened, there should no flesh be saved. But for the elect's sake, those days shall be shortened. Right, right. So that's how the Most High going to do it. Now give me 2 Ezra 2.13. Okay. Give me 2 Ezra 2 verse 13. We got to pray for that too because it's going to get to the point where it feels unbearable. That's why we'd be like, hey, man, this thing has got to speed up because we don't want to miss out on our reward. You understand? We can't be like the brothers worried about a job so much that we forget why we're in the truth. You understand? Brothers want to chase the money rather than chasing righteousness. Sometimes you can get confused, but hey, you can't forget your first love, your first confidence. Read what you got. Second Ezra chapter 2 and verse 13. Come on. Go and ye shall receive. Pray for a few days unto you that they may be shortened. The kingdom is already prepared for you. Watch. See? See? It says the kingdom's already ready. So why are you holding on to this place? It says paradise. That's what it's talking about. Paradise is ready. It's set already. Ezra wrote that. Ezra wrote this. That was 4th century B.C. Ezra told us that the kingdom is already ready. But we want to hold on to this present life. We're not to be like that. So uh, at the end of the day, when it comes to the trials and tribulations, they're all based off of whether or not we're going to keep God's commandments. Okay. And remember, the reward is what our forefathers had, what Adam had, the kingdom of heaven. And that's what we want again. So in order to get that, we're going to have to pass our trials. All right. We used to scream black power. While Heron was pushed But at the end of the day Nothing's in vain IUIC Has been given a vision The tents of Judah has risen Many has attempted the mission Minor murmuring, omitting and missing the mark Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes Gave us the spark We on Paul's mission We out on the road Purple and gold from Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are our men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.